Dear student, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. So, in this lecture, I will be going over hemoglobin structure. Let us get into the details. Now, note that hemoglobin is exclusively present in red blood cell. So, other than red blood cell, no other tissues or cells in our body contain hemoglobin. So, what is this hemoglobin molecule? So, hemoglobin is a heterotetrameric metalloprotein. That means, hemoglobin has got four subunits and these four subunits are of different types and also each subunit contains a heme group and that heme group has got a ferrous siren within it and that is why it is called as heterotetrameric metalloprotein. Okay. So, hemoglobin it binds up to four molecules of oxygen because it has got four subunit, each subunit has got one heme group and each heme group has got one ferrous siren and one ferrous siren will bind with one molecule of oxygen that means four subunits, four molecule of oxygen can bind to hemoglobin molecule. So, how many hemoglobin molecules are present in the red blood cell? So, according to some estimates, there will be around 300 million hemoglobin molecules are present in the red blood cell and each hemoglobin molecule can bind with 4 molecule of oxygen. So, if you multiply that 300 million hemoglobin with 4 molecules of oxygen, so you are going to get 1.2 billion oxygen molecules bound to hemoglobin present in the red blood cells. So, that much is the oxygen that is carried by one red blood cell when it goes to the lungs and take bring oxygen from the lungs to the peripheral tissue. So, hemoglobin it carries oxygen from lungs to the peripheral tissues while, while, while it goes from peripheral tissues to the lungs it is going to carry carbon dioxide back to the lungs. So, hemoglobin it is a carrier of oxygen from lungs to the peripheral tissue and it is a carrier of carbon dioxide from peripheral tissues to the uh, lungs. And also not only that hemoglobin in the red blood cell it has got a buffering function so that it maintains a pH uh, it, it, it kind of maintains a normal pH in the red blood cell and the buffering function of hemoglobin it largely comes from the presence of histidine within it. Now coming to developmental variation in a hemoglobin molecule. Because as the uh, person develops from uh, fetal stage into embryo, so from embryonic stage to the fetal stage, fetal stage into the birth and from adulthood. So, it is all like different types of hemoglobin molecules can uh, go on. So, there will be developmental variation to this hemoglobin molecule. So, almost all types of hemoglobin from fetal life to adult life, they are made, at, made up of two alpha chains and two non-alpha chains. That means, alpha chain is fundamental for the hemoglobin molecule starting from the fetal life onwards. Okay? So, along with the alpha chains to alpha chains, there will be other two non-alpha uh, chains. It can be beta chains, gamma chains or delta chains. This can be present. So, very exactly uh, hemoglobin is synthesized. So, the site of synthesis of hemoglobin, you can divide into three sites depending on the development. So, it can be yolk sac. So, the hemoglobin which is synthesized in the yolk sac, it is from 15 days after fertilization until 6 weeks of fertilization. So, the yolk sac is the site of synthesis of hemoglobin from 15 days after fertilization until 6 weeks of fertilization. And then a liver is going to take over from 6 weeks onwards until 30 weeks of prenatal life. And after that, from 30 weeks of prenatal life onwards, it is the bone marrow which will take over, especially the long bone bones, long bone marrows are the ones that is where is the site of synthesis of hemoglobin. So, I am going to repeat one more time, yolk sac timeline is 15 days after fertilization to 6 weeks prenatal life, liver 6 weeks to 30 weeks of prenatal life, bone marrow it is 30 weeks prenatal to onwards. So, it is the bone marrow. Now, let us look at what are the types of the chains that can vary as the development goes. So, embryonic hemoglobin that is generally having epsilon 2, zeta 2 this type of hemoglobin 
subunits. So the fetal hemoglobin it goes from six weeks prenatal life all the way into six weeks postnatal life. That life that's where uh, fetal hemoglobin is predominant. So it is uh, alpha two gamma two subunit combination. That's the fetal hemoglobin. Adult hemoglobin which is HbA written as HbA. It has alpha two beta two subunit combination. So as the gamma subunit is falling down like 30 weeks uh, prenatal life all the way to 6 weeks postnatal life where gamma chain is almost significantly decreased by that time the beta chain is running and it is increasing and it is combining with alpha 2 alpha 2 beta 2 that will make HbA adult hemoglobin so that is from 6 weeks postnatal life onwards so it is the alpha 2 beta 2 HbA combination which makes 97 percent of the total hemoglobin in adult life. Now there is a minor adult hemoglobin. So this minor adult hemoglobin it is a combination of alpha 2 and delta 2. Okay. Note that delta hemoglobin it starts to synthesize 30 weeks prenatal life and onwards in a constant way. So the constant amount it can combine with alpha 2 to make alpha 2 delta 2 that is HbA2 which contributes 2% of adult hemoglobin. So like this, so different hemoglobin molecules can be found in our blood, especially in the red blood cell. It can be fetal hemoglobin which is around 1% of total hemoglobin that we see and adult hemoglobin HbA which is 97% of the total hemoglobin that we see and HbA2 minor adult hemoglobin which is 2% of the total hemoglobin that we see in our blood. Coming to structure of adult hemoglobin that is HbA. Now the adult hemoglobin it has four subunit like HbF and uh, minor adult hemoglobin. Subunit combination is alpha 2 beta 2 subunit and it has relatively hydrophilic surface and hydrophobic interior because it is a globular in shape and any globular proteins they have got hydrophilic surface outside and the hydrophobic amino acids which are buried inside and each subunit has got heme groups within this hydrophobic pocket and these heme groups so they contain the ferrous siren inside Fe2 plus and this ferrous siren it can bind with one molecule of oxygen. So each subunit has got one heme group that means we have four subunit in an adult hemoglobin that means adult hemoglobin when it is fully saturated it can bind with four molecules of oxygen. So since adult hemoglobin it has got 2 alpha and 2 beta subunits and these 2 alpha and beta subunits they can be divided into 2 dimers that is alpha 1 and beta 1 referred as dimer 1 and alpha 2 beta 2 referred as dimer 2. Now the dimer 1 and dimer 2 can have a interaction within, within the dimer and interaction between the dimer. So that interaction within the dimer and interaction between the dimer so that can be because of different forces that can hold them together. So within the dimer interactions are usually strong and predominantly they are hydrophobic type. Whereas interaction between the dimer it is usually because of weak ionic interactions and also hydrogen bond formation and more of these interactions are usually found when the absence of oxygen is there. So that means when hemoglobin is in T state, so T state of hemoglobin is deoxy state of hemoglobin, deoxy state that means oxygen is not present over hemoglobin molecule. So when the oxygen is absent in the hemoglobin molecule, there will be more and more interaction between dimer 1 and dimer 2 and the flexibility or the freedom of movement between dimer 1 and dimer 2 is not there. It is a tight state or a taut state that is T-A-U-T, taut state. That's why it is referred as T state. Remember, T state of hemoglobin is a deoxy state of hemoglobin. So when oxygen binds to a hemoglobin molecules, there will be breakage of these salt bridges, breakage of hydrogen bonds and that relaxes the dimer 1 and dimer 2 and that's why it is referred as R state of hemoglobin. So note that R state is a oxy state of hemoglobin as it is shown in the figure. So let me explain you the figure now. So when oxygen binds to a hemoglobin molecules, as you see, there will be breakdown of the salt bridges. So you count the number of red lines between dimer 1 and dimer 2. Here it is. There are number 5, five red lines are shown. When oxygen binds to 
hemoglobin subunits so these red lines are broken down that is ionic interactions and hydrogen bonds between dimer 1 and dimer 2 broken down so it is becoming relaxed so it is an r state of hemoglobin there so this is what is all about so the structural aspect of hemoglobin molecule thank you